Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabriel, just another fan TV, man. Back at another video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on all the videos. And let's talk about the Ravens' biggest needs remaining after the draft. So, I didn't get a chance to talk about the draft prospects from day three. Uh, but I like what somebody, I like what the Ravens did on day three, all right? They got a couple offensive linemen, a uh, big guy from Oregon. And I don't know how to pronounce his name just yet. I guess we've got to learn. But I think they all call him Salah. So, we're going to go with Salah. Um, also, the USC uh, offensive guard, Voorhees, a guy that a lot of people had mocked earlier, like maybe I think I saw maybe like a third round, second round kind of guy, something like that. Uh, Ravens get him in the seventh round because he tore his ACL at the combine. Great value there. He will uh, probably won't play this year, but he people are saying, you know, like Cole Jackson on Twitter, things like that, that he's a strong contention to probably start next year for the Ravens. So that's a good move for the future. I like that. Um, uh, obviously, Kai Blue Kelly from uh, Stanford, solid corner, uh, physical corner, long corner, the kind of guy that the Ravens like. So the Ravens did things on day three that I'm a fan of, so I don't have any problem with it. Um, and then Tavius Robinson, the big um, edge player from Ole Miss, uh, I think he's like 6'6", 257, so big guy out there. A uh, little bit older prospect, but comes with some maturity with that. So uh, I'm, I'm happy with what the Ravens did on day three of their draft. I believe that they had a solid draft overall. Once they got Zay Flowers, everything else was kind of icing on the cake for me, to be quite honest with you. Uh, when you have a team that's close to as close as the Ravens are to really change to contending, you just don't want to have any bad misses in the draft. You can add solid players on top of solid players, and you still got your stars here. You're good, right? All right, so look. The draft's out the way. Now it's time to talk about the Ravens' biggest needs. I know the first place everybody's going to go is cornerback two, right? Who's out there playing behind Marlon Humphrey? We lost. Well, I ain't going to say lost, but Marcus Peters is a free agent. We don't know if he's going to come back. Uh, he could sign with another team, so he's still out there, right? And I get that. So behind Mar uh, Marlon Humphrey, you got um, Jalen Armour Davis. You got Brandon Stevens. You got Pepe Williams. So Brandon Stevens, I know a lot of people aren't comfortable with him being cornerback too. I get that. I think he's kind of really almost better as a safety. Um, and then I like Pepe Williams as a slot guy. I don't think he's an outside corner. And then Jalen Armour Davis, we didn't get to see much from last year because kind of after the Patriots game, he was in the doghouse. A lot, a lot of healthy scratches for him. So I'm not going to sit here and say the Ravens don't need a quarterback, too. They obviously do. Um, they've been talking to Rocky Sin. Um, you know, like I said, they could, it could bring back Marcus Peters as well. But I thought something interesting, right? I just wanted to look up from the championship games last year. So we're talking about AFC championship game, NFC championship game. Who were those teams cornerback to, right? So Chiefs versus Bengals, right? The Chiefs cornerback, too, was Trent McDuffie, first-round pick last year. So, good player, solid player. Um, for the Bengals, it was Eli Apple, right? Eli Apple was a good player. I wouldn't say he was nothing uh, extravagant for the Bengals, right? I know a lot of people hate Eli Apple because of how he talks and things like that. But as a football player, he's solid. Um, he probably talks way too much for the kind of player he is, but he's solid. All right. So, Eagles and the um, 49ers. So, for the Eagles, is James Bradbury. Really, really good player. I uh, think second team all pro, so great player right there. And then for the um, 49ers, I got to look at his name because um, it was Diamordor Lenore, right? So my, my point is this, right? I would say three out of those four guys are just solid players, solid names, right? Good players, but solid names. Nobody that's going to jump off the charts. Nobody's going to jump off the page to you, right? outside of James Bradbury, who's an all-pro, Pro Bowl kind of player. So what I'm saying is this. The Ravens absolutely need to upgrade cornerback, too. They bring in Rocky Sin. They bring in bring back Marcus Peters. I'm all for that. But when I really look at these teams who were in, in and competing for championships last season, that what they have that the Ravens, I would say, don't have is the uh, an insane pass rush, right? So the Ravens, we got to think about it. They lost Calais Campbell, all right? That's, that's out the door. They lost right now. Justin Houston, he could come back again. We'll see um, what he had, what, nine, nine and a half sacks right here. So they lost Justin Houston. And when I look at the Bengals, right, I see uh, I see Trey Hendrickson. I see uh, Sam Hubbard. I see guys on the defensive line. When I look at the Chiefs, I see Chris Jones. I see Frank Clark, even though he's not there anymore. But I see Frank Clark last year. They got George Karloftis, who they drafted, all right? We go over to the Eagles. The Eagles got too many guys to really even name. I mean, you got Hassan Reddick. You got Brandon Graham. You got... Javon Hargrave, who's on the 49ers now, but he was on there last year. Josh Sweat. They got a rotation of guys coming in and out of the game that is going to wreak havoc on the quarterback. The 49ers, you got you got Nick Bosa. You got, uh, uh, who was it, uh, Armstead. So they got a bunch of guys there that 
wreak havoc on the quarterback. 49ers are the same way they, they, they shuffle in a rotation of guys. So when I look at the Ravens, losing Justin Houston, losing Calais Campbell, you're losing sacks out the building, right? Odafe didn't take the step that we wanted to see him take last year. I still think he has a chance to be a really, really good player, but he didn't take that step next year. Last year, excuse me. Uh, David Ojabo didn't play until the end of the season because he got hurt at his combine, right? So where is the pass rush coming for the Ravens? I like Ty's Bowser, but I can't say he's a true pass rusher. He's a guy who can rush the quarterback, but he's not a just a designated pass rusher. The Ravens had to drop him in coverage, cover cover uh, running backs, some tight ends, because he's good at those kind of things. He can do that. So when I look at the Ravens, I say their true biggest need is adding more pass rush to the building. Because you got to get to the point where, excuse me, the Eagles have added like, a tremendous amount of talent across the defensive line. They added some more this weekend. I mean, they got Jalen Carter. They got Nolan Smith. Um, they drafted Jordan Davis last year. I mean, they they just keep adding talent on the defensive line. So the point being is this. The Ravens had to get to the point where they could have a rotation of players coming in and out the lineup to keep guys fresh, to keep guys rushing the quarterback. Because, look, in football, it's one in the trenches. We know this. And I'm not trying to explain nothing to y'all. Y'all already know this, right? So, if you can make your quarterback unsettled, if you can make the offense have to pick up their pace because the, the, the D-line is getting after it, guess whose job becomes easier? Those cornerbacks we're talking about on the back end, right? Um, you, To my opinion, you don't need an all-world defensive back, an all-world secondary to be a good defense if your front seven is getting after the quarterback. That's what the Ravens need to really focus on. How can they get after the quarterback more effectively? Um Last year, I think the sack numbers were up from, you know, Wink Martindale. Wink Martindale did it in a very, very different kind of way compared to a Mike McDonald. But if I'm looking at the Ravens, if I'm looking at the biggest need left on this team, is you got to find a way to get some more pass rush. Because right now, as it currently stands, we're hoping that Odafe takes the next step. We're hoping that Ojabo is the player that we think he can be with great pass rush moves on the outside. That's what we're hoping for, right? We're hoping he could be somebody like a, a Hassan Reddick. You know, we're hoping he could do that kind of stuff, right? Get those kind of numbers. But even the Eagles have those guys and still rotate in different amount of guys to keep their main guys fresh. So for the Ravens, that's the biggest need that I'm looking for is can they get more pass rush? Now, as far as cornerback goes, I know I've, we already talked about some names like Rockyson and things like that. But um, I think that. With the fact that they've drafted Kabul, uh, Kabul uh, Kelly, I cannot say his name, I'm sorry, <laughs> out of Stanford, I think that's going to be a solid addition to the uh, to the cornerback room. Also with um, you know Jalen Armour Davis, who, like I said, he didn't play much last year because as soon as he he struggled a little bit, Harbaugh put him in a doghouse. And we know once you're in a doghouse with John Harbaugh, it's hard to get out. So um, that's kind of what happened there with him. I think that the Ravens, like I said, just add one, maybe two corners. I, I would probably say really just one solid corner. If you could add Rocket Sin, that'd be great. Rocket Sin was on the Raiders last year. He was one of their few bright spots on a on a bad Raiders defense uh, alongside, you know, a Max Crosby, who was a normal pro, pro bowl kind of defensive end. Uh, Rocket Sin was one of the better players on that defense. So I think he is going to have interest from other teams, but he seems to be heavily linked with the Ravens just because he's been on a visit here. We haven't heard too much about uh, at least I haven't heard too much about him with other teams. You know what I mean? It, it very well could happen. I think the Ravens have to wait until uh, 4 p.m. today to make a signing. Um, I think you can't sign players right after the draft. So, as free agents go, you got to wait till the May 1st after 4 p.m. I think I saw Justin Rebeck say that. So, um, maybe they do it right away today and Rocket sends a Raven. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but when I look at this team, I look at this depth chart, I just keep coming back to how are the top teams in the NFL winning? Yes, you have solid players in the secondary. You don't, you can't go out there with guys off the street in the secondary. Ravens have tried it before; it didn't work uh, due to all the injuries in twenty twenty one. That's pretty much what was happening. I mean, I remember when um, Robert Jackson was guarding Devontae Adams in the Packers game twenty twenty one. It wasn't pretty. So, I've seen that you can't just have guys off the street. Uh, uh, no offense to Robert Jackson, you know what I mean? But, <laughs> but yeah, you can't just have guys off the street playing cornerback against NFL level receivers. Of course not. But if you're going to say what you need to prioritize more, the Ravens need to add pass rush. They need to add guys that can get after the quarterback. If they got, if the Ravens can effectively get after the quarterback next year, what's happening on the back end won't matter as much. That's just how football works. If the quarterback can't throw the ball, the receivers he got, the receivers he got on the outside don't matter. They don't matter. If he can't get the ball off, they, they don't matter. So when I look at the Ravens, when I look at how teams are winning championships. 
I, I keep coming back to that defensive line, right? If the Ravens can just be solid at cornerback two, three, four, that's enough. They don't need to be exceptional there. They don't need to be um, all world there. Like the Eagles did that, right? They had Darius Slade. They had James Bradbury, which was great. So, you know, if you can do it that way, go ahead and do it that way. Like that's more power to you, obviously. So, um, but the point being with the Ravens, with a team that's really, really good, really ready to contend right now, um, get that D line rotation settled. You get some more guys in there that get after the passer will be good. Obviously, I liked what the Ravens got on the interior. A lot of guys in there. I know they lost Clay's Campbell, like I said, but I still like Roger Washington. still like Justin Matter BK. Uh, Travis Jones is a guy who can get after the pass. We didn't see that much last year, but hopefully more playing time this year, we'll get to see that. So um, if the Ravens can add a guy or two in free agency that can help rush the passer, I think that's a bigger part of completing this defense than getting a, a bunch of corners, to be quite honest with you. So um, that's my opinion on Let me know where you guys stand on it. Um, do you agree, disagree? But hey, that, that's why I love talking to you guys in the comments. But it's Gabriel, just another fan TV. I'm out.